Have you ever felt like there's so many things going on in your day that your brain can't rest? I feel like that quite often. And when it happens, you're blocking your potential to generate new ideas and it compromises the quality of your work. But with proper adjustments, you might be able to refocus your attention. And I'm here to help you with this. This is how I get my brain to focus so I can earn more money. Let's get it started. Hey guys, I'm Manif. I became a multimillionaire in my early 20s by starting multiple brick and mortar businesses that have closed billions of dollars in sales. I'm here to help you on your journey towards financial success. The number one thing that keeps you distracted from your tasks is that dumb phone. That smartphone really is a dumb phone because it's always in your pocket, in your bag. It's one notification, one click, one chime, and it always takes us out of the attention and focus in our day. Take some time to get clarity by putting the phone aside. A little time for positive growth and attention span. You'll have more ideas coming in when you shut that thing off and put it to the side. It's possible if you remove the stimulus in the first place that's causing you the distraction. There's a lot of apps out there, but the best thing that I have seen is to put that phone in the other room or put it somewhere it just can't get to you. Let's clarify first why you get distracted all the time. According to a TED Talk by Chris Bailey, when you're in front of the computer and your phone is nearby, the average time for a person to focus on a task is about 40 seconds, and that reduces to 35 if you include social media app that you use all the time. What people often think is the problem is distraction, when in reality, it's more your brain is just becoming overstimulated. In that hyperstimulated state, we crave even more. So we start to crave more social media, more ads, more emails, and during the day, we just keep scrolling all over the place. These small dosages of distractions actually give people a hit of dopamine. It's a pleasure chemical that your brain wants, and it keeps going back to it. Some people get it with sugar, some people get it with chocolate, some people get it, unfortunately, with drugs or alcohol but it is the same pleasure chemicals. Now what happens when you're out of this hyper-stimulated state? We become bored. And you may think that boredom is a bad thing. I mean, just go to any doctor's office, waiting room, getting your oil changed, to the airport, everybody's on this thing, on this phone. And boredom is not a bad thing. What did people do without these phones? Actually, boredom is a good sign that you reduce your mind's stimulus. And when the mind is less stimulated and you become more calm, all of a sudden more ideas will appear to you because now you can hear your thoughts. You can actually hear yourself. Imagine that. So aside from staying on your phone, try doing tasks that would get you bored. Take a month and do some boring stuff and get your brain to reduce the amount of stimuli it craves and that it prefers. Think of the most boring things that you could do like, I don't know, watching a clock tick just to relax yourself. If you do this for about a week, you will notice that your mind will be a lot sharper and you're less likely to look for your phone. Because of the lower amount of stimulation, you'll be in a state of calm or rest similar to what you would get if you were to go on vacation and have no interruptions. Plus, just like the absence of phone, you will notice your attention span will grow. More ideas will come to you, not because you're less surrounded by distractions, but because your mind is less stimulated and it doesn't seek those distractions in the first place. This is why you need to relax, let your mind wander. Do you ever think about why your best ideas come from nowhere? Just like if you're taking a nice bath or a shower and all of a sudden ideas start coming to you. That's because you're usually in a state of relaxation and hopefully you don't have your phone in your hand getting wet. Your brain has enough space to think about other things other than work even. And in this mode, your brain is called scattered focus. It happens when your mind just wanders and thinks of new ideas. Now try to set a time when you can let your mind wander to help new ideas come across. And when you let your mind wander, we mostly think about the past 12% of the time, 28% of the time we think about the present, which is most productive place to be. And 48% of the time we wander about the future. We need to change those numbers and adjust your minds as much as possible to help your brain focus on present tasks. To put yourself in this type of scattered focus, do a hobby that isn't complex or complicated. Maybe even a simple coloring book for adults or other relaxing stuff like taking an extra minute in the shower or just simply walking around. And to keep your new ideas flowing, also keep a notebook nearby. Not a pen, not a phone, a notebook. So when your next big idea comes across, you can jot it down. Just a bit of a break here. Every Monday, if you want to learn more about personal finance and personal development, where you can live a life that's financially free and independent, go ahead and listen 
the Munif Ali podcast, where I cover trends and all type of stuff about financial development. So I hope to see you there. We now say that sometimes we're doing too much and we don't let our brains wander anymore because we're in a constant state of getting distracted because we're becoming overstimulated. You need more space to let your ideas come to your mind. So here are more tips to let your brain become less stimulated. For two weeks, limit your screen time. Create a disconnection ritual from technology, like setting a time after work where you don't use any technology at all, like a digital sunset, I've heard it called. By doing this, you'll discover relaxation, set your mind in a state of scatter focus, take notes of whatever changes you notice and see the difference just within two weeks. You'll see big improvements from doing these small little things. The state of our attention span can determine our success in life. Check the use of your technology, and if you're constantly on your phone every few minutes, your mind might be too stimulating. By freeing up your mind, you gain more ideas, you feel more relaxed, and then your attention span will grow, making you focus more on whatever task you really need to do. One of the ways I quiet my mind also is through meditation, but that is another subject. If you like the type of content that I'm delivering to you, go ahead and like and subscribe that button after watching this video. I'm proud that you've made it all the way to the end and you clearly have increased your own attention span with just this video. Go ahead and watch the next one. That is how to become productive and more successful. So watch that video now.